very slippery slope where if Kawhi Leonard is still this very iffy player, man, this, this, it's not going to look good and it really sucks and I really hope he comes back because yeah, the Clippers were my team uh, to beat in the NBA this year. I thought they are going to win the title this year, but even now it's, it's a very big question mark over this team. And I guess also tying a player into this with going along with injury sort of theme, which again really sucks, is uh, Chris Middleton. Uh, that also uh, very much does suck that Chris Middleton also can't find his way on the court yet this season. I was actually looking up on a basketball reference some of his stats, and I saw his averaging at the very bottom, like, oh, he's averaging pretty good numbers, this and that, yada, yada, yada. But uh, that was last season's. I don't think Chris Middleton has even played a game this season, which is kind of wow. Um, I'm trying to even remember when he got injured. I think it was sometime during the playoffs, but really sad that he hasn't, is still has not come back uh, this year. I guess there are taking it very slow when it comes to him because obviously the Bucks um, with Giannis Antetokounmpo are still the Bucks because they are great with Giannis so they don't really need to rush Chris Middleton but he is a player that is going to not only obviously help the Bucks uh, just become a better team but really help take some of the, the load and miles off of Giannis that you know at the end of the year when Giannis is huffing and puffing from carrying this Milwaukee team to however far they go they need Chris Middleton they need another guy on that team because of course throughout the regular season Bucks are great in the playoffs you know we've seen they can either be a title winner or a second round outing it's, it's pretty wild uh, speaking of that a player coming back from an injury last season to this year having almost a full year under his belt when it comes to play time uh we have Clay Thompson, which is definitely a name that's been circling around the uh, NBA sort of uh, Twitter uh, Reddit sphere of being a trade possibility, which is pretty wild to think about. Even Draymond Green, you can maybe even throw in this as well, of players that really just aren't hitting as they used to. Now, I don't know if this is a injury three a thing, an age thing, or maybe they just they just aren't hitting the same way that they used to. They just aren't the players that they used to be. But Clay Thompson this season is averaging 17 points in about two and a half assists a game, which is pretty solid. Averaging, although a career low in three-point percentage, which is definitely not the greatest. Also averaging almost a career low in free throw percentage. So a shooter not really shooting the best of his ability. Um, as a, oh wow, he's shooting 38% from the field. That's really bad if you're shooting under 40% from the field. That's really bad, actually. Um, although, I, I still do think Clay Thompson is the best scenario as a starter. Starter, starter, starter. Starter for the Golden State Warriors next to Steph Curry. He is definitely a player also that I've watched that definitely, again, is just not hitting the same. And of course, Clay Thompson being one of the greatest shooting guards of all time. Uh, one of the best shooters of all time. I mean, he could be the best if there wasn't a guy named Steph Curry. You know what I mean? He is an amazing player, but what made him so great and efficient is that he's one of the best two-way players in NBA history as well. His defensive edge was killer next to Steph Curry. That is where we're seeing a lot of that being missed uh, a lot. And again, some shooting slumps here and there just not move in the right way. Uh, I said this before in my last uh, sort of NBA talking video. I do not think the Warriors will be re-signing Clay Thompson after this his 10-year contract is up, the current one he's on. I think it's for another two years, three years. I wouldn't be surprised if Clay Thompson not only doesn't re-sign with the Warriors, but maybe just retires after that because he is already looking like not like a you know, a bad player. I think he's definitely still a great player, but for that contract size, definitely not. But you know what I mean? He's still playable, but definitely on the, 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 the decline. It's really sad to see that. And again, you can throw in like Draymond Green's play and even just the Golden State Warriors as a whole not looking the same. Right now, they are 11th in the West, but again, 11th in the West is only about three games from the one spot. Still a very tight, tight race and could easily bounce back from it. They definitely will. Um, right now they're on a currently do win, do win, do win, win streak on a five for five for the last ten. But I am also going to pick up another name of the Golden State Warriors, and that is Jordan Poole. Now, I know what you're thinking.
you're thinking Jake Pollard, but Jordan Poole when he's starting. Jordan Poole when he's starting is averaging this amount and doing this and doing that. That's great. I just still personally think Jordan Poole's best role, not only for the Golden State Warriors, but just in the NBA in general, is a six man. I think Jordan Poole is just the perfect six man spark off the bench guy that would just he could be easily one of the greatest six men of all time maybe not passing Manu Ginobili but he is a Manu Ginobili type of talent where this guy could be a multiple time all-star and a multiple time champion on great teams by the way he plays off the bench but man uh, uh, of course defensively very lackluster uh, as a ball facilitator also not the greatest this season he's currently averaging uh, about 15 and a half with about four assists per game uh defensively it's just been a uh, sort of lackluster that's for sure i think at also one point in time he was like he had like the worst plus minus on the warriors for sure but maybe even in the entire nba for a, a bit of time if i do recall a, a stat i saw on twitter definitely needs to up his play could you start jordan Poole for a couple games give clay thompson some rest because it looks like he already needs it already so early in the nba season yes and i do think you do that but should he be the starter for the warriors next to steph no i still think for them to maximize their potential as a team he has to come off the bench i still think clay's the best fit they just need uh to do something different because obviously what they're doing right now is is obviously well it is working because you know they want a title last year, but they need to fix it here and there. Uh, one player I definitely want to talk about, and it has already been into some trade rumors recently, where it seems like uh, it seems like no teams really want him because his contract is so large and his his output is very lackluster as well. Um, and that's John Collins of the Atlanta Hawks. Um, this guy at one point in time was like arguably like one of the best power forwards in the NBA at one point in time. Sort of like, I don't want to call him the next Blake Griffin, but this guy, athleticism was there, his defensive capability was there. You look like he was turning into a budding all-star next to Trey Young and just definitely, 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 definitely this season. Uh, wow. But this dude a couple seasons ago was averaging about 22 points per game to this season averaging 12. He's averaging 12 points per game so far this season on one assist, not even a steal, and barely above a block a game with six, uh, six rebounds, oh, about eight rebounds. So um, I guess you could say his hustle is kind of there. Eight rebounds a game is actually pretty nice, but as for an athletic power forward, that's kind of like a no doubt given thing. And I mean, I don't get to watch a lot of Hawks games as far as being on the literally the opposite side of the country. Don't really get to watch a lot of Hawk basketball. But if you do know, is his energy there? Is his heart in it? Does it seem like he cares? Because, man, 12 points per game is is pretty, pretty rough, not going to lie. Also, he's shooting 23% from a three, which is crazy. Shooting almost 50% from the field, so it seems like he's still much more of an interior scorer, which is sad. That is also disappointing. You would love to see him become some sort of a stretch four, which I think would maximize his efficiency, maximize his, uh, his worth in the NBA, being a guy who could not only give it to you in the interior, being an amazing finisher, a very athletic player, but also defensively being able to guard one through fives in today's NBA, being a stretch five, uh, being a stretch four, maybe even being a stretch five in some sort of uh, case scenarios. He has all those potential and then just 12 points per game, one assist on a good team. Don't get me wrong, the Hawks are looking pretty legit this year, especially alongside with the newest edition of Jashante Murray. But man, that is uh, not where you want to be right now. John Collins, I feel pretty bad for him. Also probably going to get shipped out at some point in time. I don't think he's going to be a Hawk for much longer. Um, just a couple of like Spitfire ones now. Uh, I been seeing stuff on Twitter and stuff like that about Rudy Gobert's play and maybe more of Rudy Gobert's fit in the Minnesota Timberwolves scheme. Let me know if you've been watching a lot of Timberwolves basketball, if that's true or not. I wouldn't say that's true yet. That's still kind of early on in their sort of tenure there with Rudy Gobert trying out this new Twin Tower type of uh, plan. Now, I do think him on the team is hindering maybe the play of like you know, Anthony Edwards, who loves to play in the open court, loves to play a lot of up and down fast paced game. And he is the best probably player on the team. Cat is, is is great, but for them to be a title contender, Anthony Edwards has to be, you know, 
this is not that great for them. Right now he's averaging uh, 13 points, 12 rebounds. Let's see how many blocks. Blocks, blocks, blocks. He's averaging, he's averaging not even two blocks a game. Wow. Not even one and a half. I can't even round up to two for him. That's kind of crazy. One assist as well. That's, uh, that's pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yikes. I mean, again, if you maybe have been watching it, is the stat line not really going along with it? I think I did watch, like, a couple of games of Minnesota earlier on in the year, and they seemed okay, but as a team, that is 10th right now in the West. Three-game winning streak, but it's a four for six of their last ten. Let me know. Another kind of iffy one is Zach Levine of the Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls right now are 12th in the East on a four-game losing streak, which is pretty rough, not gonna lie. It seems like maybe Orlando might be catching up and pass them at some point in time this year, which is pretty wild. Think about Zach Levine right now averaging uh, 20 points per game on the dot, which is his lowest points per game since 2017. Holy cow. Still only averaging about four assists. I would love to see him be a little bit more of a ball facilitator. Uh, shooting 36% from three. Wow, 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 wee wow. Um, 40, oh man, he's barely shooting above 40% from the field, yeah. Not very efficient shooting numbers, which if you're Zach Levine, uh, offense is your game. And when you can't even really produce that efficiently well on offense, that's pretty rough. Now, I also know that the Chicago Bulls are a very injury-prone team. I'll knock on wood for them for that, but yeah. Um, you know, Zach Levine at one point in time was looking like he could be the, the star guy for a franchise, and now it's kind of taking the second fiddle role next to DeMar DeRozan, which I never thought that would ever happen. But it is happening, and even now, it's like, man, Zach Levine, that's, that's, it's getting kind of rough for him out there for this, for his, you know, later years in the NBA. You know, he is a good shooter, but he definitely needs to show that more. He's definitely more of a streakier shooter than I thought he was going to be. Obviously, losing it, that athleticism, that balance in the NBA is kind of rough, but I'm hoping he can come back from this, and the Bulls can as well. I love watching the Bulls. They're one of my favorite Eastern Conference teams, but uh, he's kind of struggling right now, of course. You could, like, throw out the guys on the Lakers, like Anthony Davis, but even then, he's been definitely a lot better since the start of the year. Uh, LeBron is mostly hurt, but when he has been playing, he's been playing okay. Is he playing LeBron James basketball? No, but is he winning? Is he playing winning basketball? Yes. And Russell Westbrook, of course, starter Russell Westbrook is Westbrook, but off the bench, Westbrook is MVP Westbrook. So again, they're capable. I still think they'll make the play-in. Will they make the playoffs? Probably not, but the play-in, yes, they will figure it out somehow. And now we're getting a healthier team with Thomas Bryant coming back and uh, Dennis Roeder. Maybe just more play with a fully healthy roster will get it done, but I guess you could also throw them into, well, obviously, of course, you could throw them into being a disappointing team for sure. Another one from the Minnesota Timberwolves with D'Angelo Russell, who's one of my favorite players in the NBA, uh, averaging 14 points and 6 assists. This is definitely more of a fit type of thing where uh, I think Minnesota would definitely bear alongside a more passing point guard to this roster would be again a better bearing than a sort of score first type of mentality of D'Angelo Russell uh I've been seeing that some Minnesota Timberwolves fans were wishing that they would have treated D'Angelo Russell instead of Patrick Beverly to the Lakers which man I guess maybe both franchises would rather have done but um yeah D'Lo is just He's definitely on, on the decline as well. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This current year, yeah, he's having, yeah, 14 points. And I say that 14 points from D'Angelo Russell is the lowest since his rookie year. Oh, my God. Putting up 33% from three, which is pretty, pretty terrible. And shooting barely over 40% from the field. Uh, again, you, he is a scoring guard. He is maybe even more of a two guard than a point guard. But, uh, yeah, man, that's really sad from D'Angelo. I do also think that he would probably be better off in a different area, a different scenario. I think he actually would be pretty good on the Lakers right now next to LeBron James. He could be more of the, the off guard, the scoring guard. 